Thanks. Hello, my name is Eric Atkins, and this is part three of the video lecture entitled Business Ethics. This video lecture is for the Church Society and Ethical Issues in Asia class at the East Asia School of Theology. So in part one of this video lecture, we ask the question, why is ethics, business ethics important? We also looked at some biblical teaching on business ethics. In part two of this video lecture, we looked at some foundational convictions that can guide us as we navigate different issues in business ethics. Then we looked at the definitions of a few business terms, and then we began to look at uh, some specific issues that are involved in business ethics. In this third um, part, we are going to continue looking at some specific ethical issues that are involved in business ethics, and then we will conclude with a discussion about how Christians can respond to corruption. So let's continue looking at some ethical issues in business. The first ethical issue I want to mention in this in this part is has to do with privacy issues. Because of employee theft, discrimination and harassment issues, product quality control, concern about worker productivity, and many other issues, many companies monitor their employees in a variety of ways. Thanks to technological advances, these methods of monitoring can be quite sophisticated. Methods for monitoring can include the use of cameras, recording devices, programs that record employees' activities on the internet, programs that allow employers to read employees' incoming and outgoing emails, GPS tracking of employees who may be out on the field doing company-related work, programs that enable businesses to track employees' working hours, and even programs that can record the keystrokes an employee makes when he or she writes on a computer keyboard. In many ways, this sounds a lot like Big Brother from George Orwell's famous dystopian novel, 1984. The potential and actual scope of employee monitoring raises all kinds of concerns about the protection of employees' privacy. How much employee monitoring are companies allowed to do? What kind of employee, employee monitoring can companies legally engage in? And what can employees do to protect their own privacy. In most democracies, the principle is that if a company loans an employee any device, a smartphone, computer, a computer, etc., the company can monitor any activity on that device at any time, even if the employee takes that device home. For example, if the employee uses a company computer to play video games at home, the company has the right to know about that because the computer is company property. So here's the scenario. What if an employee takes a company computer home and uses it to view pornographic images of underage girls? Now, this could lead to serial, serious criminal consequences for the employee. However, if you use your own computer 
or your own smartphone while at work, your business has the right to monitor only those messages or activities that can reasonably con be considered work-related. For example, they cannot monitor the content of any calls you make, might make to your family members on your personal phone while you're at while you are at work, but they may take note of how many personal phone calls you are making if they suspect that you are spending too much time taking care of personal matters while at work. It is most unfortunate that privacy issues are even a concern, but this illustrates how sin corrupts everything it touches. Because employees have engaged in unethical behaviors in the past, many employers are now suspicious of their employees and have taken greater measures to monitor their employees. A second issue I want to talk about is the use of social media. This does overlap with the area of privacy. The question here is whether or not the freedom of speech protects what employees say on social media. And the surprising answer is that if the employee criticizes his or her company on social media, they do not enjoy freedom of speech because employers do have the right to fire employees for criticizing their companies or their supervisors on social media. But what if an employee posts his or her opinion on some moral or social issue on social media? Social media posts are often able to be read by literally anyone in the world. And many businesses now check on the social media posts of job applicants as part of their job application. On a slightly different note, the United States government now checks the social media posts of visa applicants. For example, if a visa applicant has made a post in support of a terrorist organization, he or she may be denied a visa. So when can an employee be fired for social media posts? There are several legitimate reasons why an employee can be fired for social media posts. One of these is when the post crosses a clearly stated employer policy or some obvious legal line such as threatening or harassing other employees. Another legitimate reason why an employer can fire an employee for social media posts is when those social media is when social media use clearly violates the company's social media policy or when the, the employee uses social media while at work. Now, different companies um, may have different policies about this. So about the use of social media at work. Some companies may have a very strict policy of zero use of social media at work, while other companies may say may have a bit looser policy and say, you know, we realize that everybody uses social media. So they may say, as long as you don't use it excessively, as long as it doesn't take um impair your productivity, as long as it does not affect the quality of your work, we might allow you to use to do use some social media at work. But companies may have different um, policies concerning that. However, growing numbers of businesses and government agencies have fired people for social media posts that criticize the LGBTQ movement. This means that Christians should carefully consider whether to post anti-LGBTQ content 
on social media. Now, while companies may have a legal right to fire employees to criticize the companies, their supervisors or co-workers, the question is, the question arises, what should an employee do if he or she is aware of activity at work that is unethical or even illegal? Many governments now have laws protecting those who expose unethical or illegal practices in businesses. But in many cases, those who do expose such wrongdoing often still suffer many negative consequences, such as getting fired and having difficulty finding new jobs in the same industry. Christians should have the courage to uncover such wrongdoing when it occurs, but they should also be willing to face the consequences for doing so. Many, uh, many times doing the right thing can get you punished. This is not fair, but it is a sad reality in our fallen world. Another ethical issue I want to mention is accounting practices. Every business must keep account of income and expenses, not only to keep track of where their money goes and to promote more efficient use of money, but also to keep people and companies accountable for how money is used. Accounting practices are a serious issue for every company whether they are publicly, publicly traded companies or not. There have been notable cases of cooking the books that have led to serious consequences. One of the most infamous examples of this was the Enron scandal in 2001, in which the oil giant altered its accounting reports while the accounting firm Arthur Anderson approved these accounting reports, even though they contain wrong information. So not only did Enron report the wrong information, but Arthur Anderson colluded with Enron to in, the, in doing that. Nor was this some, simply some accident. This case involved the deliberate alteration of accounting reports by both companies. As a result of the Enron scandal, both companies went out of business, leading to the loss of more than 20,000 employees at Enron and 85,000 employees at Arthur Anderson even though only a small number of accountants at Arthur Anderson were actually involved in this deception. Shareholders who owned Enron stock also lost $74 billion over during the four years leading up to Enron's bankruptcy. The scandal, this scandal also led to the suicide of Clifford Baxter, who was Enron vice chairman. So the question of accounting practices is a very serious ethical question um, that should not be ignored. Next, there is the issue of advertising claims. Another sad reality of our fallen world is that there is widespread dishonesty in advertising. Misleading claims are common, as is the manipulation of facts and overpromising benefits. While we may laugh at some of the outrageous claims we've heard over the years, the truth remains that false advertising can cause harm. For example, in January 2016, the brain training app Luminosity made the claim that playing their game three times a week or for more than 10 minutes each time 
would help prevent dementia. Luminosity was found of guilty of preying on consumer fears about dementia and other brain age-related brain conditions and was fined $2 million. As Christians, we need to be honest in all our communication, even when we are creating advertising to persuade people to buy our company's products or services. The next issue, ethical issue I want to talk about is nepotism or favoritism. Um, in many ways, this is an understandable practice because we often want to help our family members and friends. Also, when we need to hire new people, we often think of friends we know who would be good hires for our company. So nepotism and favoritism isn't necessarily bad. But the problem comes when nepotism or favoritism leads us or others to hire incompetent employees or when hiring friends or family members might lead to unfairly favoring them over those applicants who may be far more qualified for the job. In other words, it's not that one's friends or family members are incompetent, but that other applicants are clearly far more qualified for the job. Favoritism can apply not only to hiring practices, but also to promotion within the company. Favoritism can also occur in the area of procurement. For example, if a company requires photocopiers, but the employee responsible for procurement buys photocopiers from a certain supplier because they have a personal relationship with the salesperson, even though that photocopier may require more maintenance than other models, this is clearly not beneficial to the employee's company. So these are some of the ways that nepotism and favoritism can be problematic. Then there's the question of environmental responsibility. One area of special concern in business ethics is the issue of environmental responsibility. Corporations are now being held to higher standards of responsibility for their impact on the environment. Many products these days are manufactured in ways that produce many toxic chemicals. Some companies are tempted to save money by disposing of these toxic chemicals directly into rivers, oceans, landfills, and other places where they may cause harm to wildlife and even humans. But in these cases, the right thing to do is to protect the health of wildlife and humans, even if it may incur greater cost. For example, nuclear power plants need to find safe ways to dispose of nuclear waste. Many businesses also seek ways to reduce their carbon footprint, that is, the amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that individuals or businesses produce. This may be done by using alternate energy sources, achieving a better ratio between areas that are covered by concrete, such as parking lots, and areas that are covered by grass or, um, grass or trees, allowing employees to work from home so that employees won't add to their carbon footprint by driving to work and finding ways to reduce the amount of waste produced. Many of these practices are found to save companies money, but some practices may not be as cost effective. For example, 
if a company tries to improve its ratio between areas that are covered by concrete and buildings versus areas covered that are covered by grass and forest, they may have to buy more land, which will drive up costs of, of purchasing more property as well as increasing their cost for maintaining that extra land. Other examples of businesses trying to find ways to reduce their carbon footprint include airline companies buying aircraft that use next generation materials that reduce their weight, thereby reducing how much fuel they consume. Restaurants using boxes and utensils that are biodegradable or made of natural products instead of plastics, and stores that encourage customers to bring cloth bags to carry their purchases instead of using plastic bags. More and more governments are imposing more and more laws and regulations that require businesses to do more to protect the environment. However, given human nature, some businesses may try to find ways around these laws because they feel these laws are too burdensome or too costly. As we've seen with other ethical issues in the marketplace, such efforts to find ways around environmental laws or even ignore them altogether will likely lead to even greater costs in the forms of fines and cleanup efforts than if the companies will simply abide by the law. So these are some of the different ethical issues that need to be navigated by Christians in the business world. There may be others um, that you can think of, but right now, let's uh, move on to talk about corruption. The last section I want to look at is the issue of corruption. In many parts of the world, including Asia, Christians live in an environment, an environment where corruption is the norm. So we have this infographic here that talks about corruption in um, our part of the world, in East Asia and Southeast Asia. And, and so if you look at the different countries, you can see how they rank. And this is based on last year's ranking. Excuse me. So in the Asia Pacific region, the country with the highest um, transparency score is New Zealand, followed by Singapore, then Hong Kong, Australia, and Japan. And the countries with the lowest scores are North Korea, Myanmar, Cambodia, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh and Pakistan. Now, according to a 2019 survey in ASEAN countries, one in four people in the region admitted to paying a bribe within the past 12 months to access key public services. There are also numerous cases of public officials engaged in corruption. For example, a 2015 report revealed that corrupt military officials and drug lords in Myanmar had been illegally exploiting jade mines in northern Myanmar and smuggling jade stones to China. According to this report, more than 31 billion dollars in jade stone were extracted in 2014 alone, equivalent to half of Myanmar's GDP that year. Yet, the majority of people working the mine and living in this region did not see any of this money, and as much as $6.2 billion was lost in taxes. 
corruption leads to many bad consequences. But perhaps one of the worst consequences is that widespread corruption is closely linked with poverty. While there is debate about whether corruption leads to poverty or whether poverty simply creates the conditions under which corruption thrives, there is still widespread agreement that corruption and poverty go together. Now, the Bible does speak against bribery and other forms of corruption. So there are two verses in the Old Testament that specifically command uh, bribery, uh, people not to engage in bribery. One of these is in Deuteronomy 16, 19. And this verse is addressed specifically to judges. But Exodus 23, 18 also prohibits the taking of bribery. And this verse is addressed to the entire Israelite community. In addition, there are many, many other verses in the Bible that describe the negative consequences of bribery. In the face of such widespread corruption, Christians in Asia often respond in two basic ways. The first way is that many have the attitude that Christianity deals mainly with spiritual matters in life but in the real world, but in the real world, things must be dealt with in more worldly ways. The thinking is, is if you have to pay, just pay. But this approach is not good because the Christian life then becomes split into two parts, the spiritual and the practical. But God wants all of our lives to be lived under his rule, not just the spiritual part. A second way that Christians have responded to corruption is many churches go ahead and teach that corruption is not acceptable, as the Bible clearly says. But many Christians then conclude that these teachings are impossible to follow, especially when their family's welfare is at stake, and they then end up compromising their Christian lives. This leads to a life of hypocrisy, often characterized by a bad conscience. Eventually, such Christians may even come to the conclusion that the Bible is completely irrelevant to their everyday lives. So, how can Christians respond to corruption in a way that will allow them to live their lives in, in, with integrity? Because the reality is, many Christians do live in cultures and nations where corruption is widespread. And if they refuse to give bribes, they may be denied access to essential services that they and their family need. So how can Christians respond to all of this corruption? For example, is giving a gift to a teacher a form of corruption? And so we, what we will do is we will explore this question in more detail during our class discussion, because one of our case studies will be on corruption. So this is definitely an issue that um, has no easy answers, but we will discuss this issue in, in greater depth during our class session. So I hope that these video lectures help you to think more clearly about business ethics.
as I said in the first video, um, work and the marketplace affects all of us, whether we are business people, customers, or employees working in various businesses. And so because the marketplace affects all of us, and because Jesus is the Lord of all areas of our lives, we do need to give careful thought to how we conduct ourselves at work, in businesses, and um, when we're buying things and in other areas of the marketplace. So please continue to think about this and come to class ready to discuss these issues as well as corruption.